guys, it's Sarah with Grassroots Evolution Tarot, and I'm here today to bring you a monthly message for the sign of Aries for December 2021. Keep in mind it's general, so take what you feel resonates, disregard the rest, my friends, and go about your day. And know that no matter what messages do come through today, it's still up to you and your active free will, the choices you make, and the steps you take in this world to get whatever fulfillment it is you'd like to see. To me, that's personal freedom, it's personal power, and it's something that only you have because it lies at the tips of our fingers and at the soles of our feet, so no one else can do this for us. So I just wanna also give you guys a big shout out to all my subscribers. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being here. You mean the world to me. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. If you feel like it resonates and you'd like to see more, please hit subscribe, join the journey with me. I'd love to have you along the channel, along the journey as well. So I'm going to get into the cards. I'm going to start out with the Shaman's Oracle today for a little bit of spiritual advice. Then we're going to move into the Wildwood Tarot. And I have a Wisdom of the Tree Oracle for the end just to get a little bit of parting advice. So before I get into the cards, I'm going to take a moment to call in Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, and my team of light, as well as any of your spirit guides that would be here for the highest good of the entire collective. I ask them to join now. To guide, guard, bless, and protect myself, this reading, and any of you who would ask for it, to use me as the clearest channel possible as well, delivering messages that are for the highest good of the entire collective. No second-rate messages here today, my friends. So we're going to jump right into this and see what Spirit has to say. I'm going to take that one because it tried to flip, which is the Shaman of Loss. Many of us may be trying to work through some loss right now or work through some grief. You have the spirit of love here as well, which came out in the pre-shuffle. So I feel like that's very interesting. It's very important as well that we're leading with love in everything we do. Our guides are guiding us towards love. And this doesn't mean necessarily romantic. It means what would love do? In all situations that we encounter, what would love do? If we are going through an intense and an immense period of grief, what would love do? It's important as well what I heard is self-love and self-care routines because especially if we've been going through loss or if we've been grieving, if we're feeling left out, if we're feeling less than, this is where it's like, you know what, we need to take care of ourselves. Make sure you have a shower, wash your hair, brush your teeth, get your ass some food, my friends. Don't let yourself go hungry. Um, drink your water, right? You know, you've, many of you have probably heard the saying, you're basically a house plant. Just a little more complex. You need light. You need to eat. You need water. So I feel like this is really important, just spirit reminding you, what would love do? Spirit, can you tell me about the shaman of loss with the spirit of love, please? Um, what I heard is as well as yeah, the healing of grief again. And what may really help this is especially if it's a passed on loved one to remember the good times to remember the love that that person had to remember what you loved about them and to find ways within your world to carry that with you so for example um you know it could even be something along the lines of baking cookies that you and this person used to bake or wearing a color that reminds you of them or their favorite perfume um, for some of you as well, this is more than that. For some of you, I definitely feel like you may be grieving the loss of a love, of a lover in your world right now as well. And I think that it's really important, especially if you have went through a breakup, to, to know that this doesn't affect your worth just because you are not with this person anymore. I'm going to grab you a message from the Shaman of Loss. There. So it says, I am the Shaman of Loss. I can interpret lost ideas, traditions, beliefs, and meanings. Values you once cherished but have since forgotten. I help you understand what losing something means and teach you the paradox that loss is gain. I help those who are lost to find themselves and those who have lost the path to rediscover it. 
No matter how you feel is miss what you feel is missing from your life, I can help you to replace that loss with fresh hope. So it says the universe cannot survive without balance, and all things have their opposites. Thus, joy must have sorrow, good must have evil, beauty must have ugliness, and gain must have loss. The shaman of loss helps us to understand why some things must pass away, why we sometimes lose our path, and why at times all sources of nourishment may seem to dry up. Not all loss is bad. Sometimes we lose things that do us harm. The shaman in this image walks beside us through the labyrinth of time and helps us to rediscover things we believed lost to us forever. Some of the interpretations of this is rediscovery of forgotten truths, loss and gain, restoration, balance, coming to terms with loss, endurance, acknowledging who we are, and allowing things to pass onward. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things here is allowing things to pass onward. Like the book said, there has to be, there's always these polarities. Loss has gain. Gain has loss. So I think that it's just really important, again, to love yourself through every single process that you go through, to love yourself at every single place. For some of you, I heard weight loss, and this is my own coming in just because I've been on a weight loss journey for a while, and this is one of these things that, you know, losses really gain. It may seem weird. But throughout the loss, I've gained confidence in myself as well. Just because I did that, right? No one else did that for me. This is the same thing for you. I feel like as well, for some of you, if this is a relationship, if there's a partnership where you may feel lost here and you're still kind of clinging to that or holding on to hope that this situation will get better, this relationship will come back. Spirit's really, really strongly saying, get back to self-love, get back to self-care. If this person is meant to be in your world or this individual, or if this it could be a job opportunity, again, it's, it, it is in so many different ways it could take on for everyone. But if it's truly meant to be for you, it'll come back. But I feel like this is not about doing things to get it back. This is doing things for yourself. And when you're in the right vibration, when you probably when you've no longer even thought about this situation, if it's meant to come back, it will. But I think it's just really important just to remember here as well that usually when we lose something, something else is going to come in its place. So tell me more about the Shaman of Lost, please, with the Spirit of Love. Hunter of Death, looking for changes. For some of you, what I feel like as well is, um, some of you may have lost your feelings of worthiness and feelings of self-love along this journey. And this Hunter of Death is a real place that says, transformation's happening, it's time to change. We're not gonna focus on black mentality. We're not going to focus on what we don't have and we can't focus on what's no longer here because then we're not living in the present. We're not experiencing joy in the present. We're just focusing on what we don't have anymore. This is how can I love myself truly? What can I do to make myself feel better? And how can I send love out into the world? For some of you, what I heard is this is baking people cakes or, you know, sharing your love through the kitchen. That's one of my favorite ways to do it. But for some of you, this is just even, again, going down into those simple self-care things like getting to bed at a decent time. If you know, oh man, I okay, so I heard if you're hella bitchy, okay, if you wake up and you know you're not sleeping, but you've stayed up and you've been watching TV, Netflix, on your phone, whatever, right? If you've done, if you've been staying up consistently too late and you find yourself throughout the day with not enough energy, feeling sluggish, and super grouchy. Spirit's like, again, go back to what love is and take your ass to bed a little bit earlier. Self-care regimen. The bottom of the deck is the Ancestor of Memory. This card also came up for, who would I do last? Sagittarius as well. And I think that for some of you guys, this really is like memories that are carried down. For some of you, you know, I, I definitely feel like for some of you, this is memories of a past on loved one who 
it's like there's still this grip or this hold because you're still not healed from the situation, right? For some of us, this could be very new. Or if it's not very new, it's just that the trauma that we experienced with the passing of this person has been pretty heavy. I feel like it's also important, and what I heard is to rewrite this and to tell new stories. So if we, if our memories are included in this book, because this is all we've ever done, now it's time to go do something else so we can create a new story with new memories. They're also showing me the light coming from the third eye. I think as well it's really important for you to remember to connect to spirit. I think a lot of us too, what I'm feeling with this shaman of loss and the ancestor is culturally we've lost this. Culturally, I feel like a lot of us have lost that connection to spirit because it could be that it was indoctrinated that that is only religious and many of us especially if you resonate more on a spiritual level it may have been harder growing up just because where do your where are your beliefs um represented i guess is the word it is and as well as i feel like a lot of the shaman's knowledge has been lost there's still lots of shamans out there and you can take shamanic courses and take shamanic classes and you can learn shamanism. You can go on YouTube and look up shamanic meditations. I think that might be very helpful for you as well because this is definitely about healing and getting right with ourselves, getting right with spirit and allowing the things with that have held us captive and I heard hostage. That your memory I heard also can play tricks on you. So one thing is if, again, we're focusing on hurt, right, and we're focusing on what we don't have, we may be focusing on the wrong things going forward. So this is def definitely a big one where we're going to move away from a situation and come back into more of a situation of love for ourselves. So I'm going to grab you a message from the Wildwood Tarot and get a little bit of tarot wisdom here. Spirit, what messages do you have? For Sagittarius, oh my gosh, Sagittarius, Aries, <laughs> two of vessels. I'm going to put it back because I said Sagittarius, but this is about love. Aries, please, messages for Aries. So you have the Queen of Stones with the bear. That two of cups, though, that's not just Sagittarius. Some of you may have Sagittarius in your chart. Um... We are, I believe, still in Sagittarius as well. With that spirit of love as well, that could have been, um, you know, that it's not necessarily about romantic love, I feel like. You have the Queen of Stones here, so Queen of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. Some of you could be dealing with this, but I feel like this is, we're coming into Capricorn season. We are in Sagittarius. Capricorn's not far away. So I feel like there's a lot of wrap up that needs to happen before we start and we head into a new season. And this could be that with the Two of Cups, there is a new love coming into your world. That all of the loss that you've experienced in the time, it is really time to put that to bed because it's time to open up your eyes that, hey, love is here. Let's find out a little bit more, though. I think it's important to be grounded as well. You have the Ace of Arrows, which also came out in the pre-shuffle, which I find very interesting. That two cards, that while I was pre-shuffling, Spirit of Love and the Ace of Arrows, this breath of fresh air, this new light, this new thought. I feel like once you clear out your mind, right, once you get it straight, and if there is places where you've held on to loss and you haven't been able to move past that, once you feel a little bit more grounded and stable, you're going to see that your ideas, they, they have meaning. There's validity to them as well, and there is power. I feel like it's important when they are looking at this arrow that this arrow is being shot straight up. Um, what I heard with this is look out. Be careful. Don't shoot an arrow up straight up into the air and stand right under it expecting you be fine. That's what I heard, okay? Because there's a smoke trail here. There's an understanding. For some of you, I heard this is smoke signals and this is a communication kind of thing as well. So 
Let's figure this out more, please, Spirit. What is this? Ace of Arrows. The Pole Star. Ugh. The Pole Star came out here as well, which would be could be Aquarius. Could be that there's a lot of healing happening too. This is wish fulfillments. I think this is also understanding cycles as well because all of these stars, they're circling. They don't stay in one spot throughout the night. The world's turning constantly. And so is our world. Our world is constant and in constant change and constant motion. And there is also something here about, I heard astrologically, for some of you looking at the stars, maybe really, really healing. What is this pole star in relation to this reading, please, Spirit? Just the wish fulfillment. A lot of it, I feel like, is healing and not being afraid to walk on your own. Because what I did here is he's illuminated even in the dark that you know the truth. I heard you know the secrets, too. For some of you, there's secrets. There's something that has been kind of buried, and you know what those are. No wonder I heard secrets because you have the moon here. So this is also interesting. Um, I heard you could there could be cancer as well. But there's this real illusion and we're healing that. But we have the moon and the stars. What I heard as well is something that you only, you're only seeing these things at night. I heard as well beware of distortion so this particular one with the moon on the water it always reminds me of distortion because that moon looks just huge and when you look at the reflection in the water it's not the true shape and things can get skewed so I feel like as well there's going to be a lot of truths being revealed to you and this may be coming from another person but it might not it might be stuff that internally you're working through and you're just starting to understand that more so, a lot of healing happening. Again, these truths coming out. What's the loss? Thank you. That one wants to come out too. So, the six of arrows I pulled off the top. So, it would be moving on, transition, moving past. Um, I heard base ideas, okay, whatever that is. I feel like as well that could be that loss and that kind of like, um, I heard woe is me. Okay, you have the Eight of Struggles, or the Eight of Arrows in this case. Daggers. The words I heard were daggers, but these are arrows being shot. Luckily for this person, whoever was shooting was not a very good aim. I heard as well for some of you, you may have been going through like psychic attack. You may have some have someone around you who has shot arrows at you, has tried to make you fail, and you're moving past this situation, and you feel like moving past them as well. This goes down to the loss. This is definitely moving past, and these eight of arrows struggles. It's like you don't you don't need to struggle like that. You don't need to be stuck in thought loops like this. And what I heard is somebody may have been very comfortable making you feel like this. The three of bows with enlightenment here. Often this is about waiting, but in this case it is fulfillment. It's not about um, waiting for your ships to come in, right? It's the, about waiting just for yourself to step through. And if you see as well, she's wearing the double snakes here. I feel like that's also, there's a DNA kind of entwinement. For some of you, I also heard you could be pregnant. For some of you, there could have been a pregnancy loss and it could have been kind of difficult as well to, like, there could be fertility issues happening. There's the Ten of Bows with Responsibility. And this is also saying the hard times that are put down, they're done. It's not your responsibility or you're almost up there. If you're supposed to take this firewood to that fire, you're, you're nearing the finish line. So we have two cards that run the reverse. One is the ancestor. I prefer it up like this. And you also have the king of arrows with the hawk.
I heard, like, it's time to choose to move on. And to see things from a much higher perspective. As you're moving on, this moon is going to light the way. It's going to show you past the struggle. Show you past... Um, or some of you have heard infidelity and lies. But this, again, is the same thing. We're being guided by the moon. And there is a moonlit voyage here. <clears throat> I keep hearing, be who your ancestors hoped you later wanted you to be. Be that guiding light, be that shining light. And all the hurts, all the things that have happened, use those as fuel to your fire. See past them truly, see past this struggle. Because it's been an important stepping stone along your journey that like this one, we're not waiting anymore. Our strength is here. It comes from understanding and it comes from putting in a lot of time and healing here. And I think important as well as with this loss that's still here, it's still showing up. But I think it's important for you to know, excuse me, you don't need to do it all alone. Not everything is your responsibility. So you get to make a choice now on what you want your world to look like and whether or not you're going to take that new path. Are you going to forge a new path? I think it's important as well because this is in the daytime. This is making informed decisions. I'm going to grab you one message out of the book here before I let you go or before we get on to a different the card, but five. So it says the position on the wheel here is the place of the nexus point between the passing winter and the coming spring. The ancestor stands at Imbolc, which falls on February 1st. She is associated with the new moon and elements of air and earth. For some of you, that could be timing here as well. Um, that if you have been going through a lot of loss coming into February 1st, when we're kind of out of the holidays, when we're coming back into the light, I heard as well, this is when there's going to be a real importance on making sure that you do what's right for you and you make the right choice and that you're seeing above and beyond. You're not looking at just what's in front of you. You're able to have a whole lot wider of a landscape with what you're viewing. For some of you, what I heard as well is that this is not like... For some of you, you may be heard remote viewing, okay? You may not be viewing things that are happening in this realm. You may be remotely viewing the spirit world. Um, or for some of you as well, I heard remote viewing. Like some of you may be trying to practice that. Um, so let's get one last message here from the Wisdom of the Trees Oracle and see what spirit would like to leave you with. What is one message and parting message? Thank you. Juniper and Camper. So I'm gonna grab you the message from the book here quickly from Juniper. The Juniper says spirit realms. This is what it's about. I have strong connections with the spirit world and I can protect you when you want to contact these realms. I will ask as a benevolent intermediary, intermediary, so call on me whenever you need my protection and guidance. For centuries, the juniper has been regarded in many cultures as one of the trees that act as the gatekeepers between the mortal and spiritual worlds, keeping them apart and guarding against evil influences. It was common practice to leave gifts for local spirit, nature spirits at the base of the juniper trees. Juniper berries have many uses. Their bitter flavor is an essential ingredient in gin, and they are also used in sauces and stuffings, and have powerful healing qualities too, especially for the urinary and kidney. So, 
It says this is an excellent time to investigate any form of psychic work that you feel drawn to. Provided that you are acting in the best of intentions for everyone concerned and that you ensure that you are physic psychically protected. So this definitely could be calling on the um, your ancestors, first off, calling on Archangel Michael and asking him to protect you to also, um, I think it's very important when we are trying to contact the spirit world to make sure that we are being given messages for our highest good and that we are protected against trickster energy, being discerning with our energy. So let's see what camp Okay, camphor is about clarity. So spirit realms and clarity. My beautiful trumpet shaped flowers, oh no, it's the Indian bean. I teach the importance of seeing situations clearly, not only with your mind, but also with your heart. This will enable you to look beyond the way things appear to be in order to see how they really are and find peace and understanding. Set aside some time to be by yourself, then practice the slow and steady breathing. This will help you clear your mind so that your difficulties become easier to analyze and great, gain greater understanding. Also, camphor could be used, is used in small, tiny amounts in Indian cuisine, but is toxic in larger quantities. Its powerful deter smell deters fleas and other insects, and it has antimicrobial properties that are used to clear the nasal and lungs. I think it is really important this going back to seeing clearly and there's a lot going on especially in the spirit realm so make sure that you're protected but I'm hearing trust your intuition and follow your heart it knows the way. That's the message I have for you I hope it resonates I love you all and I will talk to you later. Bye guys.